I'm going to offer some reasons here as to why I feel that the Underwater Menace is apparently underrated. I didn't realize it wasn't considered a particularly strong serial until now. I respect that episodes 1 and 4 are missing and it's difficult to assess the overall experience, although certainly based on episodes 2 and 3 and what we do have available in Telesnaps and Audio from episodes 1 and 4, I think we've got actually a very strong, or at least very solid, serial here. Let me explain, especially if you're into the Monster of the Week uh, formula within classic Doctor Who. This is an excellent demonstration of how the second Doctor strategizes, attempts to lull his opponents into a false sense of security and so he can exploit their arrogance and then outwit them. This is a this this series of scripts is an excellent illustration of this facet of Patrick Troughton's second doctor. I've pronouncing I've been pronouncing Troughton as Troughton incorrectly, I believe. Reason number two, and this is something that people seem to hate. I love the design of the fish people. They're creepy. This is awesome to me. I have no complaints. This is totally indicative of one of the, what I love about classic who this this weird uncanny and strange quality and especially in black and white I think it really really works it may have looked even goofier in color maybe to the actors seeing them it looked silly although in this context it looks like something out of a bizarre dream I dig Re really really happy with it the companions are they address each other well they have great chemistry Jamie's very useful he steps up to the task and they don't all get they've all got something to do even or Polly's damsel too much a bit too much unfortunately although Ben displays cleverness Jamie displays loyalty and Polly displays intelligence despite her being a damsel their complaints about fifth doctor having too many companions at times and so it can make things a bit a little bit messy although the underwater menace at least I don't maybe I'll feel differently when we have the doctor running around with these three companions over the next two or three serials Although here I think it works quite well and uh, Jamie fits in seamlessly. I think it's a great display of how these three young people attempt to attempt to show initiative even when the Doctor's not amongst them. Good stuff. Goofy, pulpy sci-fi elements. It can be considered a bit silly for... Well, I was going to say silly for Doctor Who. By Doctor Who standards, this is normal, you know. Um, I, I suppose that if you want to criticise this serial for being a bit too silly, we're going to have to throw pretty much most of classic Doctor Who in, into the bin then. I, I think by, by those standards, it's it's a goofy, fun plot about a very, very crazy, but one-time brilliant scientist who the Doctor once respected, the upheaval and the, the tension between the religious castes of this society, plus the the more scientific, the authoritarian body. It, it's just a very interesting formula with which to stage a dynamic, I think. The whole thing looks really cool and alien. They did a great job directing and, and staging all of this, I feel. It doesn't seem as though this is necessarily some some back lot of a stage set or a warehouse it seems as though they're on some facility and some island and yeah you believe it you you believe that this could have been even though probably likely definitely wasn't just because you know back behind the scenes information and just realistic logistics of what was going on you know this wasn't shot at some facility in the ocean well that feels like yeah maybe 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 they could have the only thing that gives it away is just that they employed certain angles, right, and that they would have if they had more room and maneuverability to do so, say. So I'm going to posit myself as a fan of the Underwater Menace. That, that's, that's going to be my take here. Why not? Is this unforgivable hubris from the Doctor Who fandom standards? Do let me know in the comments if you're so inclined.